Hi and welcome to another news roundup. In this week's news roundup I'm only going to be covering two stories. These are two fairly major stories with regards to the photography world. In the first story it's Canon. Canon announced not one but two new cameras today. The first of the new cameras is the EOS Rebel SL2. It's a replacement for the SL1. It features a 24.2 megapixel CMOS APS-Z sensor, basically the same sensor that's in the Canon 77D model. It's got dual pixel CMOS autofocus, a 3 inch very angle LCD touch screen. The very angle screen is basically the twist, tilty flip screen that you find on like so the 70D and the 80D. It's got built in Wi Fi, NFC, and Bluetooth. Records 1080p at 60 frames per second. Has an external microphone input. Has a Digix 7 processor, which is quite significant for a camera that's this low down on Canon's range. With ISO going from 100 to 25,600, it's got a 9-point AF system. The SL2 got announced today, will be available in late July, basically the end of the month, and will retail for $549.99 for the body only. Or you can buy it with a kit lens, uh, EFS 18 to 55, f4 to f5.6. IS, it's image stabilized, STM lens for $699.99. The other announcement from Canon, and this is the one that a lot of people have been waiting on, was the EOS 6D Mark II. Now Canon essentially offers three full frame bodies. You've got the 6D Mark II, or the 6D line, which is their entry level full frame. The 5D line, which is currently the 5D Mark IV, which is their semi-pro camera. Um, a lot of wedding photographers, etc. use the 5D cameras. And then you've got the 1DX Mark II, or the 1 series cameras, which is their top of the line professional cameras. Now, a lot of people use the 6D cameras because it's cheap, it's full frame, and it gives you half decent results. The 6D Mark One, I know a lot of people who liked it because of its low light capability. Now it's a four year old camera, come nearly five years old, and because of its age it lacked a lot of things. There was only one cross type point in it. It didn't have dual pixel autofocus in live view mode. There was a lot of things that I didn't like about the 6D. Well the 6D Mark II got announced today and its feature set includes a 26.2 megapixel full frame CMOS sensor. Now that's 6 megapixels more than the 6D Mark I. It's nearly 30% increase. It has a Digic 7 processor. Now that's essentially better than 5D Mark IV which came with a digit 6 processor. Now the 5D Mark IV actually has more than one processor. The 6D Mark II doesn't it? It just has the single six, uh, digit 7 processor but it's a, digit, it's a digit 7. That's a big deal. It has a 45 point all cross type autofocus system. The 6D Mark I only had a 19 point with one cross type which was the central AF point. This now has 45 points and they're all cross type. That's a big deal for this camera. It has a 3 inch very angle touch screen LCD twisty flippy screen that you basically find on the 70D, the 80D, those sort of lines of cameras. Now this is the first Canon full frame to host this twisty flippy 
or as they call it, the Very Angle Touchscreen LCD. That also can be a big deal, except for one thing that we'll get to in a little bit. It offers dual pixel CMOS autofocus and movie servo autofocus. This is the first time the 6D has had dual pixel AF. Dual pixel AF is just absolutely amazing. It is Canon's crown jewel, I think. It has a native ISO 100 to 40,000, which can be expanded up to 102 400. Six and a half frames per second shooting. That's up from five frames, I think it was, on the 6D Mark I. As a time lapse and HDR movie mode, this is the first Canon full frame camera to do HDR movie. It's built in GPS, Bluetooth, Wi Fi, and NFC, so lots of connectivity. It's dust proof, water resistant, it has just a single SD card slot, and it's a UHS 1 slot. Why they didn't put in at least UHS 2, I don't know. It's only a single UHS 1 slot. Now, one of the biggest sticking points is it only does 1080p at 60 frames per second. There is no 4K on this camera. Now, it does have an electronic image stabilized 5 axis image stabilization system built in. And we touched on that in a previous video, or at least what I think the 5 axis image stabilization system will be. Basically, the Canon camera, when you shoot in video mode, crops it. It doesn't use the full frame sensor, it actually uses a crop, a 1.6 crop. So since it's a smaller space and not using the full sensor, I think the image stabilization actually takes the image and moves it around the sensor to stabilize things. But as I said, that's just a guess at this point from my perspective until I can either get my hands on the camera and test it out or read other reviews on the camera that's just a guess but why they didn't put 4k even basic 4k 30 frames per second in this if it had that I would have picked up the camera immediately with the very angle touch screen you now have a vlogging full frame camera. Now the 6D Mark II announced today will also be available in late July with a price of $1,999, basically $2,000 plus tax. There are a couple of kit options available for it. You can get it with an EF24 to 105 F4L image stabilized USM2 lens. This is the new 24 to 105 L lens that just came out, I think it was the beginning of this year or end of last year. If you want that, it's going to cost you $3,099. Or you can get it with the EF 24 to 105 F3.5 to 5.6 STM lens. It's not an L series lens and that comes in at $2,599. Now, one thing that struck me about the specs on the 6D Mark II was basically how similar they were to the Canon EOS 80D. Now, the EOS 80D is a APS-C camera. For example, the EOS 80D has a 45-point all-cross type autofocus system. The 6D Mark II now has a 45-point all-cross type autofocus system. The 80D has the very angle touch LCD screen. The 6D Mark II now has the very angle touch LCD screen. The 80D has built-in Wi-Fi and NFC. The 6D Mark II has built-in Wi-Fi and NFC. It also has Bluetooth and GPS as well. The 80D can do 1080p video at 60 frames per second. The 6D Mark II can now do 
1080p at 60 frames per second. Neither camera does 4K. The ATD has dual pixel CMOS autofocus on live view, basically for recording video. The 6D Mark II now has dual pixel autofocus CMOS for live view, for recording video. Basically, in my mind, the 6D Mark II is the full frame equivalent of Canon's 80D. Now, the 80D is a great little vlogging camera, except it doesn't do 4K and it's an APS-C, so it's automatically cropped by 1.6. The 6D Mark II can be a great vlogging camera if you only want to do 1080. But considering you're going to be spending $2,000 on it, it's going to be in your stable for, I would say, at least two to three years. The lack of 4K now is... I mean, there's just no excuse for it. Why Canon didn't put just basic 4K in this camera, I have no idea. If they did, it would sound like hotcakes. There'd be a lot of vloggers going out there to get a full frame 4K camera. Now, in a bombshell announcement made through a short post on the company blog, Micron, the parent company of Lexar, has announced that they will shutter the Lexar retail brand. The entire portfolio will be discontinued, including memory cards, USB flash drives, card readers, and other storage drives. This news comes less than five months after Lexar raised the memory bar yet again by announcing their debut of a 512 gigabyte 3500 times CFast2 card. Now, unfortunately, that kind of card isn't cheap. CFast2 is used in Canon's uh, C series video. Uh, video cameras and also the EOS 1DX Mac 2 which I own. That card came in at $1,700. And I quote, the decision was made as part of the company's ongoing efforts to refocus on its increasing opportunities in higher value markets and channels. As difficult as this decision is, the company is making this adjustment in its business to ensure it continues to be well positioned in the future. Now that's a huge blow for the camera market. This is a Lexar SD card, 1000 times. I have an absolute ton of these. I've got the 2000 times SD cards, which are UHS-2 cards. I use Lexar CFast cards in my 1DX Mac 2. I use Lexar Compact Flash cards in my 1DX Mac 2. I own an absolute ton of Lexar products. Why? Because they were reasonably priced and they last. These are actually really good cards. So Lexar shutting their doors is a huge blow to the camera industry. Whether you're using Canon, Nikon, Sony, virtually every camera uses these SD cards and Lexar was a major major player in that. Lexar if you're using uh, Nikon's top of the line D5 it uses XQD cards. Now the only player in the market that makes XQD cards is Sony themselves. Now with Lexar out the market SanDisk basically has a dominant position in memory cards. Now the SanDisk cards aren't too bad but they were priced a little bit higher and throughout my time of using cards I've only ever had one card, it was an SD card, that went bad on me and that just happened to be a SanDisk card. Now I do have a SanDisk CFast 2 card. It actually came with my 1DX Mac 2 as a bundle deal for being one of the first people to actually buy the 1DX Mac 2. Canon gave away a 64 gig CFast 2 card and it works fine, it works great. It's actually slightly faster than my Lexar card that I've got. But my Lexar card has more 
I suppose it's a 1 to 8 gig card rather than a 6 to 4 gig card. Actually, it's a 256 gig card. So I hate to see Lexar leave the market. They were one of the dominant figures in memory cards for cameras and other devices as well. If you've got an MP3 player or a phone, you might have had a micro SD card made by Lexar. I hate to see them go. The question now is going to be, are, mem are the prices of Lexar cards going to go up now that they're no longer making them? They're going to be harder to come by? Or is there going to be a fire sale because they're just, they're not supported anymore? Right now, prices are staying stable. They're not going up, they're not going down. They're basically stable. But as people want to get rid of their inventories because Lexar just is no longer, I can actually see there being a fire sale on Lexar cards and that would be a great time to go out and stock up on any cards that you actually need. And that's another new segment. There's only two stories in this one, but it was two fairly huge stories. I hope you enjoyed listening, and I'll see you next week for more photography news.